Okay. Well, anyway, thank you guys again for joining us tonight. Um, tonight's Zoom is going to be really short, but we hope really helpful. Um, it's kind of nice when a topic doesn't really have that much that needs to be gone over um, because that means that it's simple to implement and, um, you know, work into your life. So that's good. By the way, I got bit by a mosquito on my forehead and it really itches. So that's why I look like I have a hive on my face. But anyway, um, so we're going to be going over avoiding burnout, um, like getting burnt out in your business. And then like that also kind of plays into staying motivated too, uh, because I see this often, um, in my team and used to see it a lot in myself of this very, um, I don't want to say wishy-washy because I've never been wishy-washy about the business, but very much um, kind of like a roller coaster, like you're either really, really going, you're pushing hard, you're working really hard, or you hit a low, you know, something triggers you and you're just like, oh, I'm just not doing as much as I should. And then you get your butt kicked back in the gear and you go back up and down. Um, so we're going to talk about how to avoid that because um, that's not very effective, trust me. Um, but I'm going to start off talking about the difference between internal and external motivation. Uh, so we talk about motivation a lot. If you've ever read 21 Laws of Leadership, which is actually behind my head here, um, he talks about um, in order to create momentum in your team, you have to um, get people motivated. And by doing that, you have to remove demotivating factors. Um, and so it's something that's talked about a lot, but I, what I don't think that people understand, and there's a difference between being externally motivated and internally motivated. Um, so in this book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, which if you have not read it, you need to. Um, it is the number one book that I recommend to every single ambassador, um, especially all of my new level ones. I have them read this book, Strength Finder 2.0, and 21 Laws. You can read the other books too, but those are the three you have to read. But anyway, um, in, the, in this book, in, in chapter 11, um, the, the author, his name's Shad, it's a weird name, um, he says, some motivation works, it's just that most of it, and maybe 95% of it, doesn't. Um, and it's not that it doesn't work temporarily, but 95% of it doesn't work long term. And the reason for that is because it's external motivation. Um, so when I think of that, I think of maybe... Um, being inspired by somebody ranking, for example, whether it's a friend or um, a sponsor or an upline, um, or even yourself, uh, or being motivated by watching a diamond doc, you're like, yes, I'm gonna be that person too. I'm gonna do that, it's so achievable. Um, or some other sort of extra motivation, someone telling you that you're doing awesome or whatever that might be. And we're always looking for external motivation. Um, but the problem is that we need to develop internal motivation because that's what's going to last. External motivation will only last until something else happens to demotivate you. Um, it's not very strong. So, um, I have something underlined in here. <laughs> um, let me make sure it's the right one. Sorry, I should have turned to this page. Yes, internal motivation here. Um, so I'm going to read just a quick paragraph for you guys so that you understand because he explains it way better than I ever would. And then we'll move on to the next point. Um, but he says, how about being your own motivator, taking charge and putting yourself back in control? You can just by learning that all true motivation, the only kind that actually lasts and you can count on is internal motivation. Imagine having a coach that stayed with you season after season and every day in between. Imagine not needing to wait for someone else to get you charged up and moving. Imagine being able to rely on yourself to always automatically and unconsciously energize your spirit, focus your attention, and keep you in tune on top, in touch, and going for it. Can you imagine never needing someone else to prod or push you into activating your own best efforts? Um, so I recommend getting this book. He talks about how to become your own internal motivator, your own internal coach. That's what we need, guys. And um, that made the biggest difference in my life. Um, like I mentioned a minute ago, I I have a tendency to be very, like, on a high, let's go, boom, 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 until I get burnt out. And then I just take um, a step back. Uh, I'm always very present, but it's more, like, internal. <laughs> a lot of other people probably wouldn't even notice it. Um, but just my motivation, it's either high or it's low. And that's not very effective. So I'm either, like, super balls to the wall 
or I'm like, oh, I'm just not very motivated today. Um, and sometimes that can last days and that's, that's not effective. Um, the most effective thing you can do is being consistent. So it's finding some sort of happy medium, um, kind of, maybe not even a medium, like here's balls to the wall and here is like doing nothing. You want to find something like in this area. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about how to figure out how we can do that. Um, so I'm going to let Ashley talk about a few tips to find that happy high medium, right? Yeah. Oh, got to change the spotlight video. Ashley, are you there? Oh no. I think she had an issue with her, um, her video. Okay, awesome. Yay! Can you hear me? Cool, you were cutting in and out a little bit and I wasn't sure if it was me or not, but um, anyway. So yes, I wanna to talk to you guys about um, taking enough me time. What does that look like? Why is that important? So many of us, we are college students, we are mamas, we are wives, we are friends, we are daughters, we've got, or, you know, is there's the masculine side of that as well. Um, we have so many roles that we play along with our role as a businesswoman, and it can be so um, easy to forget what it is that we need to do for ourselves. How do I make sure that I set it, take enough me time? Well, that's in all about in scheduling what it is that I need to do for my business. So um, in order for me to be able to have me time, I have to set certain work hours for myself. So what that looks like for me is um, say I um, am going to be on social media. It can be overwhelming and I have certain work times that I will answer messenger because messenger is the number one thing that overwhelms me in my business. Uh, whether it is potentials, whether it is uh, team members, uh, personal messages that I'm building relationships with, that can be such a time sucker. Um, and there's, it's such a valuable tool, but it's okay to be on social media and doing other parts of the business, checking out the team page, staying focused on those training videos. Um, so setting certain times for what you're going to get accomplished in that is how you're going to be able to effectively manage your time in order to be able to find time for yourself. We're going to go over um, in a few minutes uh, different outlets of what that may look like for me time, but I know that you each probably have something back in mind that you're like, I wish I could do that. I found a way to do those things for myself. Um, so that goes with setting boundaries for yourself, setting boundaries for your business, um, being very structured and uh, dedic or, uh, very um, rhythmic with your time. Uh, if you are going to sit down and do a certain type of work, stick with it. Don't get um, drawn over to a different area of time. So being focused, uh, being uh, very structured with the amount of time you're going to be working on those things. And so as far as messenger, I wanted to go over that with you guys a little bit more. Um, there are nights that I don't do messenger. There's a lot of nights that I do because of how uh, effective it is that people are typically off work. Their kids are in bed. They, that's a great time to talk to them, but I can't spend all of my time. I need to be spending time with my son. I need to be spending time with my friends. I need to be investing in myself as well. So there are certain nights of the week that I do not do messenger. As long as I'm getting back to them in a timely manner, that is okay. So that is the first thing I will do tomorrow morning if I'm not going to check my messenger tonight. Um, so I wanted to give that note is you have to be very on top of yourself or on top of your, um, needs of, of your business. If you are going to, um, be the structured. So just, it's, um, holding yourself accountable with those following up, uh, and continuing on, th on with those conversations. Um, the, another part with boundaries is office hours or guidelines that may change weekly for you. It doesn't have to be a, hey team, I'm going to be working Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from this hour to this hour. And if you need me another time, you got to wait. It doesn't have to be like that. But for yourself, you need those guidelines and those hours that this week, I can see that these are all of my personal appointments. These are all my business appointments. This is where I'm going to personally work my business and plug those times in. Um, by having this structure to your schedule, you are going to be so much uh, more 
effective in your time than if you were to decide that, you know, I'm just going to go with it. And that is how we get burnt out is if we don't feel effective, if we don't see results, if we don't feel like we're staying on top of things, that is the number one reason that I get burnt out in this business. Um, so all or nothing does not work in this business at all. We, like Rachel said, there, it can't be balls to the wall and then just over here like, oh, I hit a wall. I can't do this anymore. Um, there has to be a happy medium there. And this is where we want to encourage you to find what it is that is going to refill your cup um, and stay structured in your uh, business and the hours that you're going to work and the boundaries that you're going to set for yourself, for your family. And um, that is where you're going to find real balance in all of this. So Rachel, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I always say, and it sounds so cliche, and my girls always laugh at me, but I'm like, you cannot pour from an empty cup. You simply can't. Um, you, you can't give to your team when you are completely and totally tapped out. When you're just like, I don't even want to talk to this person. They're asking a fairly simple question, but I just kind of want to snap at them and say, go look at the dang team page. <laughs> um, that's not good. And that's a sign that you should probably take some me time and not answer that until tomorrow. <laughs> um, but you, you can't add value to people when you are completely stressed out and strung out and just done. Um, so for me, um, I kind of, my, I think what triggers me getting burnt out more than anything, um, first of all, is doing way too much all the time and like packing my schedule. So I have to make myself kind of spread that out just a little bit. Um, and then the other one is being around, like I call them energy suckers. Um, and it's not always the same person all the time. Um, it, it, and it's not even that I don't like those people. It's just that whatever they're going through or whatever they're saying or whatever they are venting to me about or whatever it is, it somehow sucks the energy or the motivation out of me. And so something that is really huge is I will save those times for those messages. Um, I'll kind of answer them all at once, um, save them for a time when I'm not already like kind of tired from the day. And um, I surround myself with people who do motivate me, especially when I'm starting to feel that like ugh, I've been so drained. I have certain people that I know whenever I go talk to them and I'm just like, hey, I'm having a rough day. I need you to tell me like that I'm beautiful and amazing and all these things that I'm gonna like reach all of my dreams. I have those people that I go to and they build that up and I spend some time with them. Um, but also when I'm feeling really, really burnt out, um, this is what I personally do. Ashley came up with a really cool name for it. She says, when you're feeling burnt out, take three. Um, cause I always do this. I take about three hours when I'm feeling really burnt out, whether it is in the middle of the day, whether it is at night, whether it's in the morning, um, whenever I can get some time alone, like truly alone. And I just take three hours, I throw my phone away. Okay. Not really, but I like go put it somewhere and I go and I like go take a bath or something and I'll watch shameless Netflix for like three hours and it's totally fine. I feel no guilt and I have 20 messages waiting for me and a bajillion notifications and guess what? Everybody survives and it's awesome and it's great. And I feel rejuvenated. Um, and so I, whether it's three hours, sometimes I've had to take like an entire night. Some days I need like an entire half day. Some days, you know, I mean, I can't ever go a full day. I don't think I've ever done that. That would take a lot of self-control. But if you can, have at it. Um, it's also really good. I like doing this about once a week um, to kind of stay ahead of the game so that I don't start feeling burnt out. Um, I take this time proactively. Um, so find some sort of outlet for yourself, whatever that might be, whether your outlet is getting a big ass glass of wine and going to take a bath and watching something or reading a book, do that. Whether it is yoga or a combination, that's both of those are mine. Um, <laughs> I like need some sort of release, some sort of outlet to get all of that like frustration out. Um, and sometimes it's not frustration with other people, it's frustration with yourself, um, which is even worse. Um, so whether it's Netflix, whether it is like mindlessly playing some sort of game on your phone, that's what my husband likes to do. There's one called Balls with a Z. It's really fun. You should look it up. Um, <laughs> whether it's a girl's night, um, sometimes I'll have one of my friends come over she was down the road for instance called I'm like come on I need a girl's night let's watch she's the man um or whether it's going to the beach or the pool getting some sunshine hanging out with people who fill your cup who make you happy um that is probably the best advice that I have for not getting burnt out when you feel yourself starting to feel the slightest bit of icky don't wait until you're just like completely done and go ahead and be proactive and take time for yourself 
don't feel guilty. People will live if you don't answer their message. They will either find the answer themselves or they will go and ask somebody else who is available or they'll wait because it's not that important, okay? So stop feeling guilty for not answering messages. Even if it's a potential, they can wait 12 hours. It's gonna be okay. So, um, hey, Rachel, yeah. along with the, like a team member, if you believe that they are going to find uh, the answer themselves, then I will send a message say, uh, did you find the answer? Simple yeah. as that. Don't go ahead and answer it 12 hours later. Or you like the next morning you wake up and they sent it in the middle of the night. Don't answer it for them right away. Say, hey, did you find the answer? Or how can I help you? That's what I'll send oftentimes. And they're like, I got it. Or actually halfway. And I'm like, okay, we have the next step. So I don't waste my time writing up a message if that it's not even relevant anymore. Um, yep. Rachel, do you have anything else that you wanted to say before I add on? Nope, that's all. Okay, awesome. So with that whole take three, the thing that I love about that, taking three hours is like a pretty good amount of time. That's a good amount of time for a nap. Like she said, any one of those uh, outlets. I forgot that nap. Naps are amazing. Yes, I love naps. Naps at the beach. Oh, that's so me. <laughs> but or that's, that's something that I've always like longed to do. And because I've been able to stay structured and rhythmic with my work, I can do that at times. And I can still be by taking those, that time for myself, um, the three things is I can then be more productive. I am not going to feel guilt about it because, uh, and I am also going to feel refreshed. So those are my three things right there that I want for my business. Um, so if you're going to take three, no guilt, feel refreshed afterwards, and then know that you're going to be productive. You have to then be disciplined enough to work after that amount of time that you've given to yourself. Um, uh, it's, I can't tell you how many days before I grasped this concept that I'm like just like scooted through so many work days and didn't feel productive at the end of the day, didn't communicate effectively with anyone. And that is not the way that we want to run this business. We want this to be a business that we want to work ourselves and that others go, wow, I love her life because I've built something that I love for myself. If I'm working through um, overworking myself or feeling drained, that's not it. Uh, reevaluate what you're doing and go from there. So um, off of that goes into rhythm. This is how important it is to have a rhythm of what it is that you need to get done every single day. Having something you can go back to, uh, go to your sponsor and ask for guidance on what should I be doing during my work time. Um, with this freedom that we have and being able to schedule our own work and um, choose our own hours and work it around our lives, you have to be very uh, responsible and uh, keep yourself accountable in this. Otherwise, it is so easy to be like, okay, yep, I'm burnt out, so I'm just going to not work over here. Then, crap, my paycheck isn't going to cover what I need it to cover this month. Whose fault is that? We all have to turn it back to ourselves. So be uh, disciplined in this. But I, we are both giving you the go ahead to fill your cup, please. You know, this is why you've chosen to work for yourselves because you get to have that freedom. Now don't ruin it for yourself, okay? Um, do what you need to, fill your cup, find your outlet, uh, and enjoy, and then get back to changing lives. And uh, you know, what is this, the health and happiness company? I adore that new slogan, it is awesome. And it is what we get to do. So make sure that you're healthy and you're happy. Uh, you know, then it'll make it so much easier to, to share that with other people as well. So yep. Rachel, anything else? I think we. Last thing I'm gonna say is you're right. It is a health and happiness company, and I think that sometimes we can let this job, and it is a job, um, it's a career. Let it not be fun, and it not it drag us down and cause more stress than it it should um and that's when you know you need to take a step back because you should be having fun like there's gonna be down days i'm not gonna deny that and um, people are gonna be rude i mean any business you're dealing with people people are gonna be rude um but you should be having fun with this and if you're not having fun like reevaluate what you're doing and make it fun do what you gotta do um so yeah that's it okay i love you guys thank you i'll put this up on youtube soon bye